on Colonial Sports Center. Army football returned to the show to take on the run and bulldogs of Gardner Webb on Saturday. Army soccer was back in Horizon League action this week. See how they fared as the team striking for position in the playoff race. And it's time to paddle down the Ohio as our Army rowers Maria Ringo and Christina Brunette are in studio to discuss their fall season in the upcoming Inzer Cup. So hold on tight and don't go overboard as it's time for another episode of CSC. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Colonial Sports Center. I'm Kevin Plaza. Joining me this evening is Cameron Macariola. First of all, welcome. And second, what do we have in store for the people at home this well, evening? Well, thank you, Kevin. It's great to be on. We got a lot in store. We got some football, soccer, volleyball, and even some rowing. And speaking of all those athletics, there was more than just that this weekend. It was the yes. big homecoming celebration. It was homecoming this weekend. There was a lot to celebrate up at Tailgate Alley before the game on Saturday. Evelyn Luthringer was up there taking a look at all the festivities. This past weekend, Robert Morris University held their annual homecoming celebrations. We asked students what they thought about all the events. Um, I guess my part, favorite part would be all the festivities. You got homecoming rugby games, um, and then you got homecoming dance, and then you got the football game team. So it's really cool to have everyone come out and just hang out and social, get social with everyone. Definitely the dance. It was my first kind of homecoming experience, so it meant a lot. Love seeing everyone come together. Oh my gosh. Favorite part of the homecoming weekend? Probably the dance. I always have a great time with the dance. The DJ is good um, and the vibes are good. <laughs> president Michelle Patrick was also inaugurated over the weekend, so we spoke to students about their thoughts on the ninth president of the university. Oh, I love President Patrick. Um, I think she is an incredible person in general, but also the fact that she is a woman is very inspiring and it just makes me feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. She's cool. I mean, better than her last one. I mean, he was just here to, like, pad his resume. Like, I'm chill with it. I think it's really cool having her as president. I, uh, she's, she was my dean last year. Um, I think she does really cool things with her students. She actually cares about the students. So having her as president, I uh, only see good things with her. She is a queen, and it is an honor to start out my first year at RMU with her. As the tailgate was a precursor to the homecoming football game, we asked students if they were excited for the game. Oh yeah, I'm excited. I hope we're winning tonight. I am looking forward to the football game. I'm especially looking forward to homecoming court because I have a lot of friends on the court, so I'm very excited. Oh, absolutely. It is my first RMU football game and I'm gonna go crazy. Oh, I'm not going. We also got the chance to speak with RMU TV alumni and they told us about all that has changed since their time on campus. Hey, well, ahead. I haven't been back here in a long time. Um, it's really cool to come back, actually. It's really nice to see. I mean, I feel like I drove around. I was lost for 20 minutes. Um, I was looking for the Sewell Center. Apparently, that doesn't exist anymore. But it still comes up on the GPS, which is very strange. Uh, no, it's really cool to be back. The Colonials ended up falling 48 to nothing to Gardner-Webb fighting Bulldogs as they opened Horizon League play. The Colonials are now 0-5 and overall and 0-1 and in conference play. They will be hitting the road this Saturday as they play the Campbell Fighting Camels at 1 p.m. For Colonial Sports Network, I'm Evelyn Luthringer. Thank you so much for that, Evelyn. Now, speaking of that big game, the RMU football team was looking to get their first win on Saturday on homecoming against Gardner-Webb. Now, were they able to do it? Evelyn kind of spoiled it, but we're going to take a deeper dive into the highlights and see if the Colonials got trampled by the running Bulldogs. First half, first quarter, just over nine minutes left. Bailey Fisher just strolls into the end zone, untouched for the opening score of the game. Bulldogs have an early 7-0 lead. We're going to take a look at that play again after Fisher's done celebrating. Right, Cam? Where was the defense on this? They snapped the ball. Not a single see one man defender. in sight. Uh, he tried to get him, but Fisher eludes, and it's 7-0 Bulldogs early on. A little bit later, five minutes left in the first quarter, Nyree Gaither just explodes through a hole, and it's a huge play for Gardner-Webb. At least it would be if not for this fumble force by Sidney Ottinger, and he actually recovers it as well at the RMU 11, and he returns it 21 yards to the 32-yard line. What a beautiful punch out by Sidney Ottinger. He just perfect punch right on the ball, knocks it loose, and has the capability to recover it and return it for some yards upfield. Absolutely, a very nice defensive play there. Gaither tried to catch it on his back to no avail. Jason Jenkins now attempting a 45-yard field goal to get the Colonials on the board. Sales just left. The Colonials remain without points. Jenkins a little shaken up, but he's helped up by his teammates. That would be one of two missed field goals on the day. Second quarter, 10 minutes left. The first play of this drive, Bailey Fisher heaves it downfield, and it's caught by TJ Luther, and he goes 62 yards for the score. Bulldogs went shotgun for most of the game, and it seemed to pay massive dividends. You could see the early jump by the Colonials, which means a free play 
chuck it downfield. Zach Tanner, Colonials have it past midfield. Tries to find his man, but it's tipped and intercepted by Raquan Osley at the 29 yard line. He's going to return it past midfield, but what a play by Dante Thompson, number 70 on the O line, to force that fumble, which is ultimately recovered by the Colonials' Elijah Jackson. Of there all have people. been some crazy turnover plays this season for the Colonials. Second half, third quarter, just over eight minutes remaining. The wide receiver's in motion. It's an airborne handoff to Cottrell Haywood. Fakes going around the outside, cuts it back, and he's into the end zone. Near perfect day for Bailey Fisher, 20 for 24, 243 yards. Tanner looks downfield again, but this pass is trouble into double coverage. It's intercepted by A.J. Thomas at midfield. Just not sure where that pass was going, Cam. Not so much perfect for the uh, Zach Tanner, 12 of 26. Bulldogs parlay that interception into a massive run by Jaden Brown as he goes 41 yards for the score. And there's your final, 48-0. Colonials lose on homecoming. Well, there wasn't too much to celebrate on the turf, so let's have CSC's Casey Irwine and Michael Deemer break down the Colonials' offensive woes. Thanks, guys. Here with Casey Irwine here. We're going to break down this offense that played against Gardner-Webb last weekend, a 48 to nothing blowout, and also the past five games have not been great towards the Colonials. Let's take a look right here on the first play. We're about midway through the first quarter. Here's Tanner. Look around. He'll take the snap. He's going to give it to Anthony Purge right here. You see these two blocks right here. They should be pulling all the way to the left. But as you can see here, once, the, once this play develops, right here, he just goes right up the middle, and that'll go nowhere. Yeah, the O-linemen do their job. They pull to the left. But Purge there, he has to get the read and go follow them because then he'll get some yards. But no, he just goes right up the middle to the trenches where you're not going to get anything there with this O-line. I think he would do that. Here we are in the next play. Elijah Jackson here. You see... One block, one block miss right here by Coachella. Another one right here towards the, towards the back. That play also will go nowhere as well. Yeah, even if he comes to the outside, he's got two guys right here. They're going to get him down. But right here, it's that big block, big miss block up the middle is where that play is going to get absolutely taken down right there. One yard maybe for the Colonials on that one. And it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just not where it needs to be from the O-line in general. because And the play calling in general because runs up, runs up the middle of the time. They're just not going to do it. Elijah Jackson, an experienced running back in his grad year here at Robert Morris. The tight end here will go all the way to the right. Tanner here, he'll give it to O'Sullivan here. O'Sullivan here to the right. And it's just like it's all Gardner-Webb here just demolishing, this, demolishing the trenches here. Yeah, I'm not sure if this was a read option because Tanner – almost look to go left and then just hand it off anyways, as you can see right there. But then it, it, whenever he, O'Sullivan gets the ball to the outside, just about 21 of the 22 players are on that side of the field. And that play was never going to accomplish anything. I agree with you there. Here we are on our next play. Still in the, still in the first half here. Tano, he'll step back. That's, that was be Jamal Hill and Elijah Jackson. Both of them wide open. Tanner here, it looks like he's about to throw, but if we can have this play, it's a third and 19, don't you think, like, you would start passing the ball and go for it all. But no, he pump fakes it, and then it's just an easy sack for the running Bulldogs. Yeah, and that's where the inexperience comes in. I know he was looking deep because it was third and 19, but at the same time, you're down 20 nothing. If you could have just got the check down, got the yards, and then maybe get a field goal, at least try to get points on the board if you can just take yards and get a field goal, that's just what he needs to learn as a new freshman. Now towards the end of the game, this is just garbage time here. It's 48 to nothing at this point. Tanner here, he'll just start running around. It's all Gardner-Webb, and now they have the ball with four minutes to go. Yeah, once again, the O-line collapses. Tanner does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket to avoid the pressure, but then he doesn't do anything with the ball after that. I mean, I know he's getting closed down again very quickly, and then that's a nice strip sack there. But it's, it's, just, it's just bad all, all around from the O-line. But from both sides of the ball, the, this, up front, it needs to be so much stronger, especially on the offensive side because – it's just embarrassing to be last in the nation in rushing, like, because there's some bad teams out there. So to be the worst at rushing, that, that's, that's bad. Yeah, you don't want to be the worst in anything when it comes to, especially that statistical category. As Casey Erlwine, thank you, thank you guys for joining us. We'll send it back to Cam and Kevin. Thank you for that, Casey and Michael. Now, when we come back, we take a look at all things soccer and volleyball, and Sam Goldberg sits down with two members of the RMU rowing team live in studio. You don't want to miss it on Colonial Sports Center. The death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. 
it's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change because it, it just can't be us. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Let's hop right into it. On the pitch today, RMU women's soccer took on Wright State. Let's see what happened. As you can see here, two to one final Raiders over the Colonials. Elise Cantor with a goal in the 15th minute and the 55th minute made a lead too much for the Colonials to come back by. Kayla Velosi Lima scored a goal in the 63rd minute to try and start a Colonials comeback, but it was too little, too late. Both goalies today with six saves apiece. A high score or high, high shot game. A lot of shots on net today. And after the game, Chris Shaw spoke to CSC. Yeah, I told him the second half I thought was a good half. Um, I mean, again, we threw numbers forward. We ended ended in a 3-3-4 a there, trying to, you know, get opportunities and um, had a really good look there, right at right at the right at the at the last minute. Um, unfortunately, weren't able to, to tuck it away. So, you know, it was a good performance. So disappointed with the result, but but happy with the the effort and the intensity of of the players that. Now before that game today, the women's soccer team traveled to Rochester, Michigan to take on the Oakland Golden Grizzlies on four days rest. Let's see how they fared. And as you can see here, the Colonials were blank three to zero. Shots on goal were not kind to the Colonials, 20 by the Golden Grizzlies and just one for the Colonials. You can see Sammy Lopez with two assists, Carabo Olamani with one goal for the Golden Grizzlies, Renee Morbacher with one shot and Isabella Bolin with four saves. The Colonials would drop three to zero. The men's soccer team was in action as they traveled to Cleveland State to take on the Vikings. Let's take a look at what happened there. one nothing final. Hector Gomez scored the lone goal of the game seven minutes in. And there was not many shot opportunities that game. Frederick Petrelli with two saves and Omid Naimi with one save all game long. Only one shot on goal. Not enough offense for the Colonials, and their offense continues to struggle with only 11 goals in 11 games. Switching things up to volleyball now. The volleyball team finished up just recently today in Dayton, Ohio. Game two of four on the road against Wright State. RMU had lost two in a row coming into this. Let's see if they can get back on the winning track. So, Cam, I'm not, I actually forget what happened in this game. Did the Colonials win? Uh, the Colonials, I believe, lost. They lost three nothing. I uh, believe they lost. They got swept three to nothing. Dropped yep. their third game in a row. Unfortunately, the Colonials just didn't have enough offense to muster up the win in yep. the volleyball game against Wright State. Well, they followed it up with a game at Youngstown State, and let's take a look at what happened in Youngstown. As you can see, a three-two loss. Penguins jumped up two nothing, going up two sets to none early on in the game. But the Colonials did come back, winning some. Uh, some close sets, 26 to 24 and 25 to 20, but that was too little, too late. Abby Ryan's 20 kills was a tied her career high for kills in a game. When we come back, as I mentioned previously, Sam Goldberg sits down with two members of the RME rowing team and a special hockey announcement. Stay tuned.
If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Today, we face an unprecedented crisis. Tens of millions of refugees have been forced from their homes. But you can make a difference. Turn disruption and despair to hope and opportunity. Even small amounts make a big difference. Provide shelter, support, or jobs in your community. The more we understand, the greater sense of belonging we create. Act now. Visit supportcrisisrelief.org. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Cam, it's now time to hit the links as the golf Ooh. team was recently in action at Bucknell. They recently competed in the three-day Bucknell Fall Invitational, and let's see how they did. As you can see here, they finished second in team standings just behind Ryder. 866 total strokes, a total score of plus 26. Cam, I'd say that's pretty good for a three-day invitation. That would be very good for a three-day invitation. It looked like the course was a little rough. A lot of above par scores by individuals and on the team. But nevertheless, second place finish is a great spot for the Robert Morris. Absolutely. Now we switch over to a little bit of the individual side here, yeah, Cam. Yeah, let's take a look. Josh Nagy had a great three-day sessions, finished first place out of everybody there. A nice 71 and another 71, and then a killer 66 on the third day. And don't forget, Alex Selig tied for 10th on the day, finishing the total with 149 strokes and plus five. We've got another live studio interview for you in, at home tonight as Sam Goldberg interviews Maria Ringo and Christina Burnett from the RMU rowing team. Sam, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. And as Kevin said, I'm joined by Maria Ringo and Christina Burnett. And welcome to Colonial Sports Center. How are you guys feeling? First time on. Good. Very Good. excited. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nervous. <laughs> so speaking of first, your first regatta is coming up this year, uh, the Yinzer Cup. How do you guys feel going into it? Uh, I feel pretty excited. Uh, I'm sitting at uh, four seat in the first varsity eight coming into this weekend. Um, I I think with uh, all the new changes we recently had, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty confident. I'm excited. <laughs> I think it'll be a really good showing and I'm excited to see every boat race. Um, can't wait to watch everybody. Gotcha. And as you said, there's been a lot of changes and there was a change at head coach this year. The first male head coach in rowing in the Army rowing program history. Uh, coach Weber, uh, how do you like him so far? I he's feel a really like good he's, guy. Yeah, he's, he's, a, really he's guy. a really good guy. He's adjusting well. Um, you we're, know. we're breaking him. We're getting him used to, you know, our <laughs> shenanigans, if you will. Um, he's we're getting a little loud. bit softer. So. Yeah, we're a very loud team. He's a very quiet person. Yeah. <laughs> Man, a few words, but he's, yeah. he's getting there. Yeah. Gotcha. So going into the season, you guys are senior captains. Uh, how does it feel to be in this program for four years and then finally get the chance to lead the team going into the first regatta? I'm pretty proud to be, you know, on year four. Um, this program's done a lot for me, and I mean, it's done a lot for both of us. So, to be able to be in a position to lead um, this team is is really something that's special to me. Yeah, I I uh, I fully agree. Honestly, uh, I never really thought I would be in this position, um, and to just have the opportunity and get voted in this position by our teammates last year is just really really cool and uh, I can say for the both of us we want to do them proud. Gotcha and being voted into the being voted into the leadership role that you guys are in what's some of the advice that you shared to the to the younger members of the team? Um, I'd say uh, to remember uh, college isn't forever um, to kind of just like make the most out of every situation yeah taking nothing for granted because yeah. um, one day you're gonna miss getting up at five o'clock in the morning to stand out in the rain or you know <laughs> carry a boat down to the dock you're gonna miss that just little things that 
make the experience. So talking about experience, mm, t uh, the last time the Colonials won the conference was 2001. Would you say that is the goal for this team? Oh, 100 percent. Absolutely. I, I honestly think it, I would be so happy if we did it this year or even in the next few years, uh, just being able to like know the girls that were able to yeah. bring that trophy home for RMU. It'd be very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see where the program goes in the next few years. I think it'll take a few years to build, but I'm, I'm really excited, and I, I think it'll be really, really good. Gotcha. You mentioned standing out in the rain at 5 a.m., <laughs> <laughs> building, um, building a boat to, towards, the, towards the river. Uh, kind of take me through what a practice day looks like in the day of a life of an Army rowing member. Well, um, it's usually pretty early because we have a lot of uh, student teachers and nursing students on our team. Um, and the first thing we do is we kind of set up the practice. So we have to bring out our oars and uh, the launches for the coaches to go in. And then we kind of meet with our coaches, go over the practice plan and everything. And then uh, we bring down our boats to the water, um, launch and, you know, do do the plan that our coach set up for us to do. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, Maria, Christina, thank you so much for joining us here on Colonial Sports Center. Let's send it back to Kevin and Cam. <laughs> well, Kevin, you know I got ice in my veins, and I'm super excited for RMU hockey to return. And they just made an announcement this week. Nathan Breisinger was up at the RMU, or sorry, excuse me, the Lemieux Complex to take a look at war, what RMU hockey just announced. Since the day that the Robert Moore's men's and women's hockey teams were cut back in May of 2021, there's been a multitude of events to help generate money and create awareness for the relaunch of the programs. And there has been no bigger event than what took place here last November, the Robert Morris Celebrity Hockey Faceoff. And that event is back for the second consecutive year in January. On Monday, Robert Morris Athletics announced that their RMU Hockey Celebrity Faceoff would return for its second annual event at the UPMC Lemieux Complex in Cranberry. Last year, the event was played in front of a sold-out crowd and featured numerous local and national celebrities as well as former RMU players. Men's Hockey head coach Derek Scully, who was an instrumental figure in the rebuild, touched on why the event is back for a second year. Well, I think the first year was a, a tremendous success, and we went into that with the idea of saving Robert Morris Hockey. And uh, that was a kickstart to our final push to save the program. And then after that, we figured we need to have a celebration of, of uh, with the community and to be able to do a second one and more announcing, hey, we are back. It was a must ask on who would be the celebrities featured this year, but Scully is keeping it a secret for now. I can't, I can't ruin the surprise. I gotta, we have to have the announcements. Uh, we're gonna announce, uh, tickets will go on sale. I believe they're October 24th. I think that's when they said they were gonna go on. And then little by little leading up to it to, to keep the enthusiasm and keep the excitement going, we're gonna uh, uh, release uh, some of the celebrities and alums. And there'll be uh, a lot of familiar faces with, uh, with both celebrities and alumni coming back. Just like the celebrity face-off event, the hockey players who are currently on campus continue to attend events to increase recognition in the community. We've got uh, um, a lot of different things to get out in the community. We had a, an outstanding tailgate the other day at homecoming. Uh, our players are going to be at the, the Halloween uh, Spooktacular, I think it is, in Moon Park. Uh, they work the Swickley Harvest Fest just to get all these to continue to get our name out. As the hockey programs work their way back, the Celebrity Hockey Faceoff is another step in making it a realization. We think it'll be just, uh, just as an exciting event as it was last year. And we're gonna do an auction again. We've got some great prizes. I can't, I can't say enough about the support that the hockey community um, from the NHL level to the minor leagues to the college level gave us. And um, it's just continuing. And um, like I said, we're aiming towards uh, less than a year before we're officially back on the ice in the game. Tickets for the Celebrity Hockey Faceoff will go on sale on October 24th as the programs continue to generate awareness for the relaunch of college hockey in Pittsburgh. Reporting for Colonial Sports Center, I'm Nathan Breisinger. Don't go anywhere quite just yet. We got top five plays just after the break here on CSC.
Do you want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us, protect our families. Don't do that. No. Don't hit your brother. Oh. Not again. What did I tell you about playing in the mud? Ugh. Raffi, not so close to the pool. Wait. Frankie, happy. What are you doing? We told you never to touch the gun. I'm sorry. I didn't think it was that big of a you deal. You could have hurt yourself. Safely store your guns. Unload, lock, and away from ammo. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Cam, it's time for my favorite segment, probably your favorite segment, and everyone's yes. favorite segment, the top five plays of the week. Here we go. Number five, we're going to the pitch. RMU versus Wright State earlier today. The ball will get to Marcella Sizer, who gets it into the middle of the field. And Elise Cantor, you heard her name earlier in the show, threw the legs of the defender and scores in the bottom left corner to give the Raiders an early 1-0 lead. Well, we're sticking on the pitch. Number four here, Gabriel Laquona lines it up in the corner. Line it up, sends it into the front and just out of the frame. Uh, Kayla Veloso Lima volleys it out of there and into the back of the net. Number three, we make our way to Joe Walton Stadium. Colonial's down 14 0. First play of this drive, Bailey Fisher, a long pass downfield, caught by TJ Luther for the 62 yard touchdown. Just a fantastic throw and catch. And Gardner Webb pretty much dominated this game. Free play, Cam, like you mentioned earlier, for offsides. The Colonials were offsides, and the Bulldogs took full advantage. Well, number two, still at the Joe. Gardner Webb's Jaden Brown goes right down the middle, bounces off a colonial tackle, and runs it to the crib for a 50-yard tutty, putting them up 41 to nothing. Small man, but that was a big play. At number one, Joe Walton Stadium, first quarter, Bulldogs lead 7-0. Nareed Gaither explodes through a hole, and it's a huge play for Gardner Webb, you would think, until Sidney Otiger gets the fumble and the recovery at about the 11 yard line and he returns it 21 yards. We saw this play earlier, but we had to show it again because it was just that crazy camp. So much mayhem in this play. At that time, you thought it could be a momentum turner for the Colonials. But it was not as they lost 48 nothing. Now Cam, there's a lot of action going on this weekend and in the next week. What is your game to watch? My game to watch is RMU women's soccer as they travel to IUPUI Jaguars. My player to watch here is Haley Finale. She's got three goals on the season, but she has 40 shots leading the team. But on the other side, IUPUI's Ashton Kudlow, stellar goaltending for uh, the Jaguars. It's going to be tough for them to get by that brick wall and hopefully pull off an upset of the number four Horizon team, Horizon League team. I'm going to go to the hardwood. Volleyball is going to Highland Heights, Kentucky to face Northern Kentucky. Friday, October 15th, 6 p.m. My player to watch for the Colonials is Abby Ryan. And Anna Brinkman for Northern Kentucky leads the team in points and kills. 116 kills. She's had a great game this last week, setting a career, uh, tying a career high on kills. I can't, well, we have a, yeah, go ahead. We go got ahead. an announcement next week for next show. We are going to be live at the RMU UPMC Event Center for Madness, live at 650. Madness, where we get to see men's and women's basketball team and their upcoming season, and the hype is real. Cam, that's obviously going to be a fantastic show. A new time, but the same network. For Kevin Plaster, Cameron Macariola, everyone upstairs and downstairs, this has been Colonial Sports Center, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>